video is about the art direction. This 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 video is about the art direction. It is not about the music. IT will never be about the music. Do not comment harassing me about the songs I do not care please unclench. Now let's continue. Twice recently released their 13th? 14th? Okay, can I say? I genuinely dislike that only SM Entertainment has the common sense to correctly label their album numbers on streaming platforms. Twice has like a dozen and one EPs and I can't keep track. This one is their 13th, named with youth. Hilariously titled, I'll say. I think when half of your group is about to be pushing 30 and you have 9 years of a career under your belt, it would be better to let go of the fixation of youth rather than cave into the industry's ridiculous obsession with it. This is not to say when you reach your late 20s, you aren't youthful, quite the contrary. But I do feel the word youth carries an air of naivete, inexperience and childishness. Three words I would associate with a well-oiled group such as TWICE. Rather than feel sweet, it feels like it almost undermines just how far TWICE has come in their career. If not for age, how could they have learned and improved over time? That does not come with youth, it comes with years of experience. The title was picked out as a hug for fans, as it's also saying with you signifying the unwavering bond TWICE and ONCES have built over the years. Still, Art does not exist within a vacuum and I couldn't help but find the title to be underwhelming due to what I just discussed. With the influx of concepts centered around youthfulness thanks no doubt to Minhejin's art direction for new genes, it makes the fully grown adults in the industry focusing on the idea of their youth quite exhausting. I do expect this from idols who are younger and barely out of high school but once you're past 25, I personally yearn for ideas that can only be told by those who have endured and overcome pivotal moments in their lives that teenagers simply can't grasp yet. In terms of that, it felt like the mark was missed with a decision for this album title. The subsequent concept photos don't fare any better either, unfortunately. It's certainly a step up in production for twice standards, but there's nothing here stylistically that makes you want to come back or even anything that feels special to twice. For an album that puts so much emphasis on Twice's identity and how that identity allowed them to become the group they are, the album's concept is completely devoid of it. A few photos have some interesting composition, but overall the entire thing is bleak. It reminds me of Luna, oddly enough. Given that Twice is from a much larger company with a much larger budget, it says a lot about the quality here. The Luna comparison feels spot on in terms of the video visuals carrying pulling off a pizzazz that the rest of the art direction clearly misses. I Got You is painfully generic, having for the most part very cookie-cutter high-budget beauty shots that give off this vibe that you're watching a commercial. However, the concept film with youth and one spark redeems those failed ideas with a much cleaner execution. While watching, you can feel the bond between the members and the scene choices in both feel like callbacks to previous twice eras such as What is Love, Ready to Be, Eyes Wide Open and more. The execution of One Spark specifically feels like feel special done right, the set production is incredibly sleek with the editing complementing the tone and pace of the song. The dance scene at the end on the bridge might actually be one of Twice's best, right next to the subway set design from I Can't Stop Me. It feels refreshing to see Twice actually in a location and not green screened in somewhere for once. Plus it being filmed at night, helps illuminate the bridge and thus the girls more and also serves as a nice contrast to the first dance scene. While I wouldn't categorize one spark as Twice's best music video by any means, it's certainly their best one in recent years with the exception of Talk That Talk, but even then, one spark knocks it out the park. Talk That Talk is pretty but at a certain point while watching, you realize the team essentially mashed together three separate aesthetics into one era and the result was jarring to say the least. One Spark is much more consistent, albeit unfortunately less fun to watch than the aforementioned music video. Nonetheless, that is essentially a win for Twice whose team has been continuously struggling on their image for the past few years. I give with youth a generous 7. I think while this album was nothing to write home about stylistically speaking, it does at the very least show a bit more care put in by the team than previous releases that felt a bit more rushed and not thought through. It wouldn't hold up well amongst their peers, but in the context of TWICE it's just fine. Opposite to TWICE, 
Blister Films Easy feels appropriately titled given my thoughts on the group's career thus far. Easy. It's no secret how underwhelmed I am by the Five Films art direction as I've spoken about it at lengths in various videos. Their debut was essentially the reason why I made my video about what concepts mean in K-pop. Lister Film has always been a group that displeases me because they simply will never live up to the complex ideas that the group desperately wants to convey in their visuals. They fancy themselves contrarian, while their art direction falls neatly into place with every other group, never actually disrupting the industry that could amount to legitimate change. Easy unfortunately follows suit. While I definitely see validity in comparisons of FX with concept sets Sheer Mur and Feathery Lotus, the difference in execution only further amplifies my previously said comments regarding List with them. Sheremur's filtering and poses feel very reminiscent of Red Light but its inability to actually do anything interesting leaves it feeling more like a much more better produced version of Red Velvet's finale photoshoot. Red Light's concept photos held no punches with much more raunchy photos that broke the more polished, high fashion look that K-pop was reigning in during their generation. Something that honestly, would have fit Easy's concept perfectly. Regardless, it isn't exactly fair to put the two side by side given that Shearmer is trying to plant an image of purity in the viewer's mind, as evident with the styling and further connections to Catholic imagery in the rest of the art direction. There is a much better case for Feathery Lotus, whose concept leans closely to FX's electric shock but could not compare in execution. This could have been an actual moment for the group not to easily bow to what would be aesthetically pleasing for their Korean audience and instead provide a look that troubles, even if by a small margin, to what the masses have come to demand, much like Electric Shock did with the use of the styling. Its similarities only serve to remind you that Listerfin will always put aesthetics first, rather than actually link their commentary to their work. At most. Yunjin's concept photo from the set will serve as the album's beaming torch and carry new eyes to the project for years to come. Its ability to convey the concept at hand, oppose the K-pop standard and look gorgeous while doing so only proves that the group is capable of executing their ideas, but fail to do so by choice. Like every Listerfim album, Easy loses its steam halfway and produces quite mediocre work after an amazing introduction. Balmy Flex is unbearable levels of basicness, turning Listerfim, a group who prides itself in being inspired by high fashion, into Gen Z shine chic. The photos look like they belong on the window of a 70% off sign at Forever 21, and that's being as nice as I could about it. It's tacky, vapid and completely hollow of a personality, all descriptions that shouldn't be anywhere close to an album that's meant to showcase their vulnerabilities in an empowering way. It also feels quite try-hard, between the scarf wrapped about Yeonjin's head and Chawan's hair, the concept set feels like an imitation of what popular black influencers and celebrities have undoubtedly done better because it's authentic to their own style. To me, it speaks largely to the pitfalls of this recent wave of gay pop that's reflective of first generation trends. How could you boast about being yourself in confidence when everything you do is just a commodified version of a subculture you would never be a part of? I want to make it clear, in no way am I trying to cancel Listerfim and I do hope that as a black woman I would be able to give my honest thoughts about things that give me discomfort without it turning into a stan war. This process is something I've come accustomed to and I don't foresee it changing with how TikTok manages to whitewash and neatly package already established aesthetics and rebrand them to a wider audience to rewrite history. At most. The least I could do is give my thoughts and have it fly around as a meaningless footnote in space without further provocation in the form of discourse. So please, keep it at that. Moving on, as usual, the Weverse version of list of theme albums are where capitalism thrives and any form of style, personality or message crashes and burns. It's mediocre eye candy that easily gets a response from the Pinterest graphic design lovers. At the very least it introduces a burst of color into Listerfim's doll photography, which can't be said for the compact version which could be summed up in one word, pointless. I think it speaks volumes when the photoshoot for your merch has more legitimacy than whatever the hell was going on with these two final sets of photos. The visuals beyond that are par for the course in terms of the fivesome, barring. Good Bones concept film does entirely too much heavy lifting for the lackluster art direction that followed up from it. The brash bratty nature of the concept film feels earned given the song and the additional sound design. 
the tension cuts through the screen like a knife as you watch. There's this feeling of anxiety throughout the entire clip that makes you feel like you're watching girls who are barely holding a mental breakdown together. They sound exhausted, their tone almost flippant in how they have to plead for people to see them as human beings because they make everything they do look effortless. It's actually the best execution of their concept, which finally acknowledges the absurdity of girls who are so close to perfection their photo might as well pop up next to the word in searches, making art that tries to relate to an audience that will never be capable of reaching those standards. Thus, it makes the cracks in their otherwise confident demeanor all the more chilling to see. This feels authentic and raw while actually pulling through on their high fashion look, the concept film starkly resembles an actual fashion campaign. It's gritty, it's unique and it feels like only La Serfim could have done it. This to me, is their pink tape film moment. Something everyone will come back to discuss and enjoy for decades to come and I bet will serve as inspiration for the upcoming generation of K-pop much like Pink Tape did. It's just a shame that the project is weighed down by the stereotypical, useless visuals that are provided for the rest of the rollout. The teaser clips are pointless and I'm not sure why they continue to add these in their rollouts. They never serve to expand on the concept, so what's the point? The track samplers are no better always feeling quite lazy in its approach. The art of the highlight medley is dead in a ditch at this point I see. It all concludes in Easy's bland music video that essentially begs the audience for empathy through the means of shock value to abysmal results. I do want to start by being honest though, I believe a good portion of the western audience Lister film has acquired missed the intention of the decision to film at a church. I've seen commentary that ranges from it was disrespectful and unneeded to it wasn't a big deal. I would have thought they would be humping across and I think both sides of the spectrum are lacking critical thinking. The setting of the church is directly linked to the first concept set, Shirmer. Mer are biblically linked to those who are sentenced to crucifixion, which is death by being nailed on the cross and hanging until inevitable demise. I know most will immediately point to their name, which identifies them as angels as the obvious religious connection but it goes further than that. In fact, that's quite a non-factor to even bring up compared to the much more realistic bigger picture. It's supposed to speak to how Lysrophim feels, they are being persecuted in their own culture for speaking their truth, much like Jesus Christ was. It's emblematic especially of their relationship between South Korea's more conservative society and where they fit in as women, nonetheless, female idols. To oppose these oppressive ideals that the system forces South Korean women into is to accept an onslaught of criticism by those who seek to maintain order, as they have a vested interest in possessing power unchallenged. Female idols are vilified and harassed endlessly whether they make mistakes or not. I think the best example of this would be the constant backlash many of them receive for reading any sort of feminist literature, Irene and Yeonjin coming to mind. To the more reactionary South Koreans, the women of their society choosing to educate themselves is a threat because in this world, knowledge is a powerful tool to liberation. The more you are aware of your rights, the more you are aware that the system is rigged against you, the angrier you become. That anger then has to be compartmentalized somewhere. Once you target the source of your oppression, it's in your best interest to channel that anger into something productive that will help dismantle the system. This is why conservatives love Christianity. They bastardize religion in order to justify the oppression of more marginalized groups. Evangelicals interpret the Bible as fact and see it as a passage of text that holds the correct order to society rather than what it actually is, a book full of stories that hold core lessons that you are to apply to modern life, nothing more, nothing less. The interpretation of the religious text was never meant to be literal. Mind you, I know this and I'm not a religious person at all. I'm borderline an atheist. If I understand this, conservatives should as well but that's not their job. Their job is to get you riled up, to explain to you that there is a problem then misguide you on who to be angry at for it. Of course, I'm American and I'm not well versed on the specifics of how conservatism may operate a bit differently in South Korea but I do know at its core, it all serves the same purpose. They want to make you docile and subservient to their values that they believe to be morally correct and if you threaten those values. They'll threaten your life by any means. So yes, while Lysrophim wasn't exactly doing anything in the church that anyone secular would find crude, the simple act of dancing so confidently while showing more skin than average is an act of rebellion to the conservative system. 
that act of rebellion is enough to stir outrage from a certain crowd, it speaks just as loud as doing something a bit more inappropriate by Western culture standards. The styling also confirms this further not only of course with the crown of thorns but also the veils, which is symbolic of marriage. It could be signaling to the expectation of women to be married off at a young age in multitude of issues that I won't get into. I'm very against the concept of marriage and I think it does more harm for women than good 98% of the time but for once, I will save my social commentary for my own brain riddled with mental illness. So yes, I completely understood the point of Easy's music video but still, I feel underwhelmed by the final result. The idea is executed through this shock culture lens in a way that removes almost all the bite it could have possessed. The actions that unfold feel entirely on the nose, not unfamiliar for Alistair Fim's body of work but especially disappointing given the potential that this specific project had. The director nor the creative director seems to have the guts to actually pull through with what actual vulnerability looks like, only providing this still easily aestheticized version that robs these scenes of any real impact. Some will say maybe that's the point, maybe it's because whenever the audience sees an idol in pain, we still admire their beauty amidst self-destruction. That list of them is viewed so perfect, that even their pain looks easy. My counter to that is that is such a stupid fucking interpretation that if you genuinely think that it legitimately a good point, I have a bridge to sell you in Idaho by 12 p.m. Lustrofem has shown us perfection throughout their barring, lackluster ass career whether their creative director would like to admit it or not. Nothing they have ever showcased in their art has broken a single goddamn boundary, they are always existing within the standard and never outside of it. This comeback's entire premise lives and dies by the idea that just because they are perceived as perfect human beings to idolize does not mean they can't still feel pain like you and me. Literally what use would beauty shots during what's supposed to symbolize their pain do for the overall project? That's just stupid as fuck and I really wish people would stop intellectualizing poor concept execution as some masterful gambit of irony. They should have showed what pain actually looks like, they should have humanized them. This is not what human pain looks like. This is what a commercialized version of human pain looks like. If not even a comeback centered around overcoming imperfection can get Lestrofem to drop the beauty standards for a second and deliver imagery that may be seen as unpretty, then the entire concept moving forward is completely cooked. I give it a high 6. I said it since day 1 and it's been unsettling how every album just proves my initial thoughts right 2 years later. What is the point of Lestrofem's art? What is the point of aiding commentary to these societal standards if you're only going to do so in a whisper? I didn't do this two years ago but I'll be clear now, there is no point in art that assimilates to get its message through. Born to be manages to be its ease most soulless project to date, being so abysmal that its position as the group's second full-length album in their wide-spanning discography shows that it'll only be a continuous freefall from here on out in terms of quality. Before I begin on the art direction, I do have to give my personal thoughts as a Missy because these past few months have easily become some of the most insufferable as a supporter. Even before debut, Leah has struggled significantly with her self-image, responding to negative comments about her appearance that slowly morphed into the constant bullying of her dance abilities compared to her group members. Leah has acknowledged this before, saying that she always felt different in comparison to her members and has shown signs of anxiety in regards to not living up to standards. Leah has had various health scares since debut regarding her anxiety which eventually resulted in her subsequent hiatus in 2023. I am grateful that Leah took her health seriously, I am happy that she is seeking help in order to heal and find a path forward that's more healthy for her. With that being said, I found the decision for JYP Entertainment to release a second full album after Leah's hiatus to be genuinely insulting and, to me, spoke volumes as to how the company treats Itzy's music. A second album is not something to be thrown away, a second album is a milestone, any album is. K-pop girl groups rarely receive them as it is and it's quite bizarre that this significant milestone would commence without the little main vocalist of the group. To have Leah miss out on this feels cruel, the excuse that she will have more albums to celebrate with them rings hollow. Like I stated, Girl groups rarely receive full-length albums as is and I doubt that Itzy, who has significantly been receiving less care by the company over these years, would be getting another one soon before their contract ends. 
I need to stress to those who are casual viewers of Etsy that the girls did not need to release this album and it could have 100% been pushed back to a later date where Leah could rejoin to record it with them. For 2023 alone, Etsy released their first full Japanese album and then another Korean comeback with Kill My Doubt. They were in no position overdue for a comeback, quite the contrary. The girls are always working even when we think they're on break, you realize this when you watch the contents for certain eras. When they're not releasing the comeback, they're recording another one whether it be a Japanese or Korean one. They have never had an actual break since they debuted, this hiatus from Leah should have actually given the members free time they genuinely deserved but instead the company continued to work them to the bone. If they really wanted to keep Etsy's brand still trending in the meantime, there are tons of ways that doesn't include having them promote an album as a foursome. I'll list them now actually. 1. Rujin and Yajai could release music as a subunit since those two are the only ones you push anyways. 2. Yuna could actually be promoted and given opportunities to attend events, I mean she's the visual member of Etsy and you'd think she wasn't the way she's absolutely nowhere. If anything, her branding should be the most focused on. 3. Getting Yuna into rooms where she attends maybe fashion weeks on her own could improve Etsy's overall image rather than dragging all four of them into it, which feels inauthentic at most. 4. Give Chirai on her own little show like Yeri or Wendy had. Chirai on is practically half of the reason sneakers began rising on the charts because of those clips of her being drunk going viral. Many people believe she's nationally hilarious but Jipe and Division 2 never capitalize on this despite the fact that being a variety idol can literally promote your group in South Korea. Second gen idols used to do it all the time. Let's get into the art direction now because it's going to further continue my argument as to why Born to be just shouldn't exist. Starting with the name track itself, Born to be perfectly encapsulates the entire issue with the project. This does not look like Itzy, nowhere close to it. Everything about the concept feels like a poor man's version of Espus Girls which is a bold choice given how universally panned Girls was on release. Did Espa invent mountains, girl crush and this form of styling? Certainly not. But I don't think that's what anyone was claiming and pretending that's the point being made is playing dance for sports. The point is, this shows a lack of identity on Etsy's part that they would have to rub shoulders so closely to something someone else brought to the table when they were once credited with being fourth generation leaders who changed the landscape. To go further, the music video can't be described as such. It's a glorified performance version. There's ways to do dance focused music videos and many western artists have nailed it with a concept to match. This is not the case for Born to Be. Not to mention, once again, the focus on heavy dancing feels insulting in terms of the context of the release. It feels like it's say, finally now that our left footed member is out the way we can finally pull out all the stops and dance, it feels like Leah was holding them back. Even if that's not the intention, it's not a good look and honestly does nothing for them. We know Itzy can dance, we've established that when they debuted. We didn't need another track to further enforce this idea that everybody has agreed upon. This is not challenging anything nor is it an impressive feat on their part. On the opposite side of the spectrum, we have Mr. Vampire, which seems to be Itzy's official attempt at the Y2K R&B fusion that has washed into K-pop's shores to underwhelming results. The concept photos are soft and show some stylistic choices that Itzy has lacked in terms of that for a while, but outside of that, what is here? The styling is predictable and safe, taking the Y2K trends but not making it unique to the group at hand like say, Red Velvet, Espa, Triple S or even Stacey. In Itzy's case, it would have been incredibly easy but alas, this is not the same group that tasks risks anymore. The set design fares no better, lackluster minimalism that has never been found in an Itzy music video until 2023. The group once known for their brash, unapologetic bursts of colors and patterns have slowly but surely stripped them out in place for nothing. This depressing, dull direction that the girls have found themselves in makes it harder to identify who it's see even is anymore. Unicene is a clear reference to American Beauty's grossly iconic rose petals seen wrapped in pointless callbacks to Cheshire and Kill My Doubt to feign some sort of intellectual depth for Born to Be. To say the least, it doesn't work but Mixies on Twitter seems to think it was brilliant enough to constantly tweet about it, so I won't yuck their yum. 
Chirai on swinging about and while she looks gorgeous, in context of the set design it's random and jarring. They try to do some interesting composition with Rujin, having her closer to the camera to play around with the perspective but overall it's not much to write home around. Yeah Jai is around a bunch of glass, which I think is a perfect symbolism for how hollow all of this is. Beyond that, we get the obligatory 4th gen scrapbook editing VFX effects that have become tired and played out, funnily enough, due to Etsy overusing them for years. Other than the scene of the big red hard hole, Mr. Vampire is bleak from beginning to end. I don't think minimalism will ever suit a group with such a powerful presence like Etsy. It's boring and the random actions they are made to do throughout the video don't even hit the threshold for aesthetically pleasing. They're vapid beauty shots with nothing more to offer, not even the beauty. How do you manage that? I understand why the art directors went this route, I do believe the song itself calls for this more Gen Z soft club, Neo Soul 2000s R&B look. The issue is that it doesn't feel like there's a concept here. It feels like this was just a Pinterest board given far too much budget. I believe they should have stuck out this office aesthetic they clearly had for the first few seconds of the music video and built the entire thing around it. Let the setting be an office, but expand on each member's part with different areas and more complex angles. With office siren currently reigning, I could have seen this vision leaning in that direction and getting more overall appreciation amongst a wider audience. I don't think Itzy's team nor honestly Mitzi's comprehend that you don't even need all these moving parts to make a music video with a similar aesthetic work. Suman's closet tour Miracle and Giant Pink Tuesday is better than Monday prove this. This could have been better if the execution was bothering to make something worth remembering, but that's not the purpose of this. This is simply seen as a throwaway visual for a track that isn't the main title track, so the company believes it isn't worth the quality that Untouchable later received. As I spoke about in my Unpopular Opinions video, it is absolutely disheartening that New Jeans debut promotion cycle has spurred on more laziness by the industry rather than innovation like Hador showcased. I said it then, I'll repeat it here. If the song is good enough to promote, then it's good enough to receive a quality thought through concept, not these bare minimum visions that require the littlest amount of piecing together. Speaking of bare minimum, the solos. Where do I even begin where I didn't already divulge in my previous video? If I repeat myself, I apologize but what could I say, when I'm right, I'm right. Yet I solely wants to capitalize on her viral studio tune concept but it flounders on execution in all aspects. The setting is uninspired, the lighting is very poor and neither work to make the complex choreo pop, which is necessary given the member we're speaking about here. It's as low budget as you could imagine feeling like a dark concept from a Nuku artist rather than the dynamic firebomb we've come to know from Yajai. Ironically enough, while Selgi's 28 Reasons music video is a disappointment in context of Red Velvet, something like that would have worked well for Yajai here. Though with the way the song gets lost within its own genre, maybe settling on a concept for the directionless would have been equally a task and that's why we were given an uninteresting performance video. The logo is unreadable as I mentioned before, taking inspiration from more liquid metal typography in a rather awkward way that has the Savage did miles better. We go from self-referential to straight up double dipping with Rujin, whose entire concept feels like it was ripped from Bet On Me's music video. On one hand maybe this could be seen as characterization and consistency, expanding on Kill My Doubt's place in Etsy's work and giving it some depth. On the other, I can't help but feel like it defeats the purpose of a dedicated solo promotion if it was just going to be a concept copy and pasted. Her surroundings are pretty for sure but even this has been done better. Mamamoo's Windflower is also centered around heartbreak but its locations are vivid and constantly changing to match the evolving story. You see the girl's grief, their despair and eventual healing throughout the music video that feels way more relatable than the harsh cuts and stationary three locations that Rujin's solo is dragged down by. Where Windflower succeeds, Rujin's runaway does exactly what the title says. Chirai On's mind being the project's second unreadable solo logo sums up what's going on here well. Nobody knows what the hell this logo is trying to say and nobody knows what the hell the directors were trying to do with this music video. Much of the commentary from this solo are connected to Sunmi's name which doesn't bode well for Chirai on being that this is her first solo endeavor attached to her name. 
How could this be Chirayan's image if people can't even see it and not point to a previous artist under the company with the same exact likeness? Nothing about mine embodies Chirayan, it feels like she's doing a cover of someone else's song rather than performing her own. There's no personal flair added to feel unique to the singer unfortunately. This music video at least felt like they had a competent idea and good inspirations in mind, but it's poorly executed much like the others. It's a concept that's hard to sell, a balance between the slightly quirky and weird behavior mixed with a sexy allure that oozes charisma. It's Elaine Sunmi has perfected, it feels second nature coming from her, for Chirayon, not too much. Unisolo manages to possess the most personality amongst the four, pretty in pink and shining in futuristic velour. It mixes Neo Y2K and 8-bit elements to a charming result. Though the second set design feels like it doesn't match up well with the rest, the concept being centered around a diamond makes it more excusable for its inclusion. It's more appealing for sure. It's a pity that the best solo on the album, Leah's Blossom receives no accompanying visual other than the lyric video that was released early. Blossom had the best foundation for an amazing concept as well and probably would have been the song to draw most non the enjoyers back into the group but alas, JYP Entertainment would rather release a half-baked album than think logically about their decisions when it comes to Itzy. The way the album concludes feels almost useless to discuss as it's a combination of all the issues that destroyed the project's potential from the start. Untouchables teasers are generic and boring, tapping into a second-gen look that, gee, Idol would soon wash them in no quicker. The dramatic events that unfold in the music video feels like a successor to Itzy's more mature music videos such as Ringo, Wannabe and even somewhat Logo but overall, it's just okay. It's not their worst but I'd be hard pressed to label it their best, or even top 5. I mean if Espa couldn't pull off this massive battle concept twice in their career, I do feel as though it did not bode well for what Itzy could produce. The logos are questionable, the set designs are Itzy's most unremarkable in their career, the styling is okay but nothing to write home about, the concept photos are boring as hell and the music videos show a huge drop in quality in terms of Itzy's videography. As I declared in my unpopular opinions video, I feel as though Itzy has nothing to say anymore in terms of their art and Born to Be was the ultimate manifesto of a career spent trying to do the next big thing rather than further establishing their own identity. They have their highs and lows, but this album felt like their first true rock bottom moment. The issues that Kill My Dad were supposed to address seems to have just reared their head hair more uglier, but I still do hold on to faith that things can be rectified. A lot of Born to Be reminds me of my critiques of Ive, who I have felt completely went in a better direction for their first EP. If they could do it, I still believe it's Eakin as well. Well Straw Besties that's all, let me know how you felt about the art direction of these three. I've seen mixed feelings, especially in terms of List or Fem. It does feel like as more projects release, people are becoming a bit underwhelmed with their style, much like what happened to Etsy. Anyways, thank you for watching. Remember, you can support me by sharing this video or purchasing anything on my Gumroad shop, link below. I love you all, see you in like 10 months.